To some people, speed limits are an absolute necessity for keeping our roads safe. But is that actually the case? Where'd they come from? How do we set them? And do they work? I'm Nolan Sykes, and this is Wheelhouse. One of the first speeding infractions for a car was written in 1899. A bike cop pulled over Jacob German in his electric taxi. Yes, electric cars were around in 1899, but we'll talk about that some other time. And yes, he was pulled over by a bike cop. German was going 12 and an 8. Dude, what were you thinking? You're so reckless. There are people and horses and vegetables. Think about the cantaloupes. Okay. <laughs> by 1930, about half of the states had their own speed limit laws. But in 1942, a nationwide speed limit of 35 was enacted to save fuel and rubber for the war effort. But after World War II, states started to question whether the federal government even had the right to tell them what laws to put on their roads. From 42 to 74, State speed limits varied greatly, but in 1974, the federal government mandated new legislation in response to the oil crisis. But they couldn't set a national speed limit outright because the states would get pissed. So they enacted the Emergency Highway Energy Conservation Act, or EHECA. It didn't set a national speed limit, but it did limit federal highway project funding for states with speed limits over 55 miles an hour. To the dismay of most drivers in the US, States set their maximum speed limit to 55 miles an hour because they needed that federal money to maintain their roads. Washington thought that lower speeds would mean lower fuel consumption, and it did, about 1% lower. So it kind of worked. In the end, states won out, and the EHECA was repealed in 1995. States were again free to set the speed limit to whatever they wanted. But how would they decide? Believe it or not, we play a part in how speed limits are set. As a general rule, we'll drive faster if a road is wider and less congested, and slower if a road is narrower and has more sight markers subconsciously telling us how fast we're going. Knowing this, a stretch of road can be monitored by a state's transportation department. The speed of each vehicle passing by is then measured and recorded. Let's say 100 cars were observed. In an increasing order, we choose the 85th highest speed. What we find is that a wide majority of drivers fall within plus or minus five miles an hour of this number. We round to the nearest five, and by this method, that should be our speed limit. It's called the 85th percentile speed, and it's how most local and state governments determine speed limits. Pretty smart. But by the time the suggested speed limit goes through politicians, community action groups, and outraged soccer moms, the speed limit gets set lower. On average, up to 15 miles an hour lower. Let's say we measure a stretch of highway with the 85th percentile method, and we find that most drivers stick to around 70 miles an hour. But this stretch runs through a populated suburb, so the speed limit gets set to 60. Because of this artificial reduction of the speeds people actually drive, the drivers traveling at the speed that their brains tell them is safe are now breaking the speed limit. That's not good. This makes the speed limit seem arbitrary. The problem gets worse when you consider people driving under the speed limit, which is something we see every day. What happens if someone driving five miles an hour under the speed limit changes lanes in front of someone driving five miles over the 85th percentile? In our case, that could be a difference of 20 miles an hour. And if they're not paying attention, that can be an accident. So it's easy to see how not following the 85th percentile rule can make things tricky. But does that necessarily mean the politicians and soccer moms are wrong? It makes sense that driving faster would be more dangerous, right? Let's look at some data. The Department of Transportation looked at total accidents at a bunch of sites in a number of states, before and after their speed limits were altered. Turns out, there was no statistical difference in the number of accidents relative to the speed limit. So they found lower speed limits did not mean fewer accidents. Another study, this time from the National Institutes of Health, looked at the long-term effects of repealing the national maximum speed limit. Their study didn't contradict the one from the DOT, but they found that accidents that did happen were more likely to be fatal. So it's just as safe and more fatal to raise speed limits. Are there advantages to higher speed limits? Yes. Speeding infractions would likely go down and traffic flow would improve in some areas. But is that worth the increased risk of fatal accidents? One example we can look to is the Autobahn. The Autobahns are famous for having almost no speed limits. For the most part, Germans can drive as fast as they want. And the crazy part is, is it's safer. But can this be attributed to speed limits alone? No, getting a driver's license in Germany is way harder than it is in the US. Getting a driver's license costs $2,000. 
Yeah. Over here, it's like 300 bucks. And drivers follow the rules. In Germany, the left lane is meant exclusively for passing, and Germans follow that rule religiously. To sum it all up, speed limits have their place, as long as they're done correctly. The issue of whether or not to raise them isn't black or white. It depends on the road, and if the people who drive decide the increased risk of a fatal accident is worth it. And if speed limits aren't raised, they'll probably just drive the speed they want anyway. Oh, and one last thing, stay out of the passing lane. Thanks for watching Wheelhouse. If you liked the video, like the video. Share it if you think other people might like it. Remember to subscribe to Donut. We got a lot of shows. Monday is Wheelhouse with me. Tuesday is Field Prep with Matt Field. He's building a Formula Drift Corvette, which is crazy. Wednesday is Science Garage with my buddy Bart. Thursday is Up to Speed with James Pumphrey. Tells you everything you need to know about your favorite cars. Friday is The Bestest with Tony. He's doing a top 10 countdown of the coolest stuff in the car world. Wheelhouse answers the questions you never thought to ask, but what have I not thought to ask? Let me know in the comments. Get in there, write something. I'll check it out. If you want a donut shirt, we're selling those at shop.donut.media. You can get yourself your own. We're also selling stickers. You can put one on your car, like me. Thanks for watching.